can you be trendy and sustainable? It has been a long, hard winter and I work from home. So frankly, this is what I've looked like for the past few months and it's not on. I would definitely like to have a little bit more fun with my wardrobe, but I'm also aware that the planet's kind of on fire. So can I take some inspiration from these trends without buying anything new? Let's find out. the algorithm thinks that we are similar you might have also been seeing these kinds of videos pop up 2023 is going to be full of trends and while the trend cycle is a merry-go-round I would very much like to hop off of I'm also really inspired by some of the artists behind these collections and I do see the act of dressing myself exactly how I like but sustainable as an act of creative resistance so we're going to go through some of those 2023 predicted trends and see if I can recreate those with the clothes I I already own. No buying allowed. Uh, let's go. So the first trend that caught my eye was this thing called sheer joy. <laughs> or what's not to like? From dress overlays adding drama atop a simple evening slip to more risque lingerie bearing pieces, it's a super sexy way to layer and add a sense of sultry intrigue. I don't know if I've ever described my style as sultry, but we'll give it a go. This is going to be the first building brick in my assembly of some kind of sheer joy outfit. I make no apology that you may have seen this before, as applies to most of the clothes in this video. In fact, if you are a regular viewer, I would like to play a game of bingo in the comments. Go and guess which videos you've seen this bits of clothing before in the comments and I will tell you if you're right or wrong. So we've got this mesh underskirt, this kind of moody mink sheer blouse. I'll give you a clue where you've seen this before. Is skirt off sick? And because I rarely throw anything away, I found this ribbon that I got on a present that I actually think matches these colours quite well. So let's see from these if I can make sheer joy. Okay, there were several moments down the assembly line when I really didn't think this was gonna work. I tried three different colours of bras under this top to see if any of them would look vaguely normal and they didn't. But then I remembered I had this rather cheeky bright orange bandeau top, which I never would have thought of if I wasn't utterly desperate. <laughs> But I actually think it adds a pop, a pop of colour to this otherwise very beige outfit. Because I love the orange so much, I actually would have loved to put an orange belt with this, but I don't have one. So instead, we're kicking it off Lena style with some leopard print. Shh. I know I'm supposed to be trying new things, but I need my comfort blanket, okay? The ribbon went in the hair which looks lovely, but is frankly a little unstable. If I was gonna wear this somewhere, I'd put a lot more clips in it. But overall, I bloody love the shape, the movement. I like that the sheerness makes sure it's not too well behaved. And you can also see my tattoos through the shirt, which not only makes me feel cool, but also <laughs> makes me feel like I didn't completely waste my money on these as a tattoo lover who lives in Britain and can only get their tats out about three months of the year. I wouldn't call it sultry. <laughs> or sexy, but it is sheer and it is bringing me joy. So I think it ticks a lot of the boxes. Okay, the next trend that all the magazines are reporting is, and you're gonna have to trust me on this, summer black. I know, I know, but compared to the other trend, which was all about shears, which shears means microplastic shedding materials, polyester, that kind of thing. Wearing black all year round, especially as a spillager like me, who likes to get baked beans on literally everything I own, when you think about it, black for summer is an incredibly sustainable option. Now the articles say to focus on softness, lighter fabrics, slightly more understated black and uh, you're in luck because I've been recently really obsessed with this sewing book by DIY Daisy. Found some old backing fabric in the back of my camera cupboard and made this. <laughs> I know, I'm as impressed as you, just don't look too closely. <laughs> There's a lot of suspicious seams. So I'm going to use this as an excuse to try and style this and who remembers the video where I made made this bow from actually the same fabric. So don't knock it till you tried it. Let's try some summer black and see how we get on. Okay, the black is here and I don't feel mad about it. We've got this peplum shape to the top. So I thought I'd mirror that in a kind of Christmas tree concept. Stay with me. With these wide leg Lucy and Yak 
jeans. The back is very summery and then I've popped the bow very haphazardly in my hair. <laughs> Just picture it done pristine. Instead of like an autumnal lip or a darker gothy lip, I thought I'd go for a like bright pink summer lip. And then also I don't want to look like a dick, but I've seen the kids do the crossbody bum bag thing and I just thought it might make it a bit festively. <laughs> she says tentatively. And then some DM sandals to make it look a bit more summery too. Oh, haven't worn these in six months. I'm back. The summer, she is coming. Okay, this is summer black. There was an attempt. Okay, I think I can keep my pink lipstick on because the next trend is heart motifs. <laughs> and I'll be damned if I haven't been preparing for this since the moment I was born. This one, I've got two me made options. Firstly, uh, it's too good to explain. I'm just gonna have to show you. Okay, so these are the dungarees that I customized for when I was performing from my poetry collection during festivals last year. It's called Bargain Bin Romcom. Get it? I basically cut up my first pair of Lucy and Yaks that were absolutely worn out and I sewed them onto some new Lucy and Yaks to make this lavish ensemble. But was that enough? <laughs> No, I decided to challenge myself when I got this second hand duvet, this pattern, and I made this. Again, don't look too close. I upcycled a navy zip from the back of one of my space tops that I cut up. So to say it's perfect would be very far reaching, but I've got it, I've got to show it you on. You, you, you got to see. Here. <laughs> She is. I may have made it like 20 sizes too big, so we're not talking about the back. But I think because it's making such a statement, we'll keep the accessories loud. Thought I was gonna say quiet then, didn't you? You don't know me at all. Red charity shop boots. Red roses for Valentine's Day. Red beret. <laughs> and my insufferable I'm in Paris influencer post outfit <laughs> is complete. Wow, in both the best and the worst way. Ooh. I guess that's what happens when you work from home for three years and forget how to walk in heels. Okay, so the next trend is say yes to the goddess. <laughs> but I like the idea of what I'm seeing, which is a lot of silk, a lot of draping. And I think I have the perfect thing. I found this in a charity shop in Aberystwyth when I shot this video. It was unworn and it's ghost with M&S. I can't stop looking at it, so let's style it. Okay, here she is. On her own, I'll admit that she is kind of wearing me. I feel like she's kind of like, hey Lena, I've been invited to a party, I guess you can come. I also think that the designers in this dress <laughs> were expecting me to have a little bit more boob and a little bit less tum, but I will not be deterred. What we're gonna need is a belt to keep with the Grecian theme, a little tiara. If you're wondering if you've seen this before, I'll give you a clue. There were three people in this marriage. Surprising amount of tiaras on Depop, just saying. And then, so the belt isn't a floating bit of black and also maybe just to grunge up a bit. I'm gonna pair it with my incredibly, sadly underutilized high heeled Doc Martens, which I literally never wear because I have nowhere cool to go, but keeping them in my wardrobe distracts me from being 33. Okay? Okay, I did say yes to the goddess. I'm not exactly regretting it, but I'm still not sure if it works. Let me know in the comments below what you think, but I'm not sure. Okay, the last trend is grunge revisited. Now, messy hair and oversized tartan happens to be a speciality of mine, especially since I did the Helena Core video where I dressed like Helena Bonham Carter, but this seems to be something a little bit different. Grunge for spring, albeit with better hair. Before you reach for the peroxide, note the polish reserved for these looks, largely via small heels, sleek blow dries, and considered jewelry. For every successful sewing project, I have one that's a little bit of a fail. And this is a skirt that I, again, made from the DIY Daisy book that I didn't quite finish. And it, the way it fits is kind of sloppy, but that actually might be perfect for this look. So this is the piece I'm gonna base the whole outfit on. It is shedding threads. <laughs> I've got some sheer tartan to go with it and my utility jacket, because apparently, now this is dystopian, <laughs> 
utility is back in because, so the fashion articles say, we're talking about the apocalypse so much that people are kind of in the mood to prepare for it and go a bit army style, which is sinister, but I do have the ingredients to make that happen. So let's try something, shall we? Pray for me. <laughs> okay, here's the basis for the outfit, skirt, sheer top. You can't see it, but navy tights to tie in with the kind of navy top so it doesn't look too weird. I've given my hair a courtesy brush because it did say sleek hair. And instead of no jewelry or like messy gothic jewelry, I'm gonna go with these very sleek, lovely pieces I got from a sustainable jewelry company that I love called Catrice, just to attempt. <laughs> A bit of elegance. Jacket. Usually I would default to Doc Martens for this look, but I'm going to try some elegance and go for a little shabby heel and maybe some extra tartan with this massive oversized scarf. Too much tartan? <laughs> maybe. I feel like you can't really see the outfit with this on, but you, I would wear this, I would wear this, but in the interests of keeping it simple. I also worked on a brown lip that I think could be classy. And yeah, I think that's the finished look. I think, I think that's it. Thank you for joining me in this silly sustainable experiment. If you love fashion, we're the same. I love it too. I love experimenting, but I also love living in the real world. It's genuinely a calming practice of mine. And I have learned so much in the last five years about thrifting, making my own clothes and styling in more creative ways than when I used to just walk into H&M and pick up the thing that they served to me. Now, if we keep consuming clothes at the rate that we're currently consuming them, by 2050, we'll have tripled the textiles consumption we had since 2000. That is not <laughs> sheer joy. That will bring on a very dark summer. So if you are interested in staying in love with clothes, but also with reality, please subscribe. I've got a huge playlist here of other sustainable fashion videos. And remember, trends have become so cyclical, they basically don't exist. And if you see something on the runway or in a shop that you're like, oh my God, that speaks to me, I love it. Chances are it's not the first time you've been attracted to some of the aspects of that that piece of clothing. Look into your own wardrobe. I bet you've already bought something kind of similar. And while it's great to be inspired anew, it's also totally fine to hang on to the stuff that you have been in love with. For instance, I'm not giving up cottagecore. You can't prize the linen garments out of my still furious pores. And frankly, in 2023, what I would like to bring about is Sound of Music Core. Also, something to be aware of this year, apparently heroin chic is back in, although it never really left, is being emphasised. And I would personally like to warn against that. As you can see, I am a size 16 and I found these trends incredibly easy to adapt and play with, even though I don't have Kate Moss's bone and flesh. Nothing wrong with that, but uh, it's hers. She can keep it. Let me know in the comments which one of these outfits was your favourite. This video has been made possible by The Gumption Club, who tip me per video, so I can give all of these lovely sustainable fashion videos away for free. Frogsnog, out.